Hello YouTube, in this video I'm going to raise a challenge to scientific realism. Uh, scientific realism is the view that we are justified in believing that our best scientific theories are approximately true, uh, and the vast majority of realists will make a kind of success to truth inference. So the claim will be that the reason why we're justified in believing that our best scientific theories are true is that this is the best explanation for the success of science, right? Science is remarkably successful, and the best explanation for that is it gets at the truth, right? So there's a, an inference from the success of science to the truth of scientific theories. Um, now, there have been a number of challenges to realism over the years. What I want to focus on is specifically how realists have responded to these challenges. So, for instance, um, one of the most popular uh, objections to realism appeals to the history of science. There have been plenty of theories, historically, that seem to have been successful, right? Uh, they, you know, made correct uh, predictions, uh, surprising predictions, um, but they turned out to be false. Um, so, you know, Newtonian mechanics, remarkably successful, uh, but turns out that, at least in terms of its description of the underlying structure of space and time and gravity and so on, it's wrong. Um, similarly, you can look at things like the ether theory of light or the caloric theory of heat or the phlogiston theory of combustion. I mean, these theories were pretty successful, um, but they were since displaced. Um, similarly, you have uh, promiscuous use of idealizations in contemporary science. So, yeah, even if you even if you look at modern science, you find scientists constantly appealing to uh, models that contain falsehoods. Um, so, you know, I've got videos on uh, on all of these these challenges, so you can um, check out uh, check out those videos if you want more. I'll link them in the description. Um, but the usual response to these sorts of objections is to uh, modify the realist inference. So, you know, so we start off with this idea that, okay, science is successful, the best explanation for that is that our best theories are true. Uh, so there's just this inference from success to truth. Very simple, very straightforward. Um, what we have done, though, what realists have done in response to these kinds of challenges um, is modify the inference. So instead of just talking about success in the abstract, we try to find specific types of success. Um, or instead of sort of saying that we infer to the truth of a theory, just in general, we only infer to the truth of some specific parts of the theory. So, for example, um, one popular move is to say, well, we can distinguish between the working posits and the idle wheels of a theory. Uh, the working posits of a theory are those aspects of the theory that are actually used in the derivation of the predictions that the theory makes, whereas the idle wheels are aspects of the theory that you know might be pragmatically useful or they make the theory intelligible or whatever, but they're not actually involved in the derivation of the predictions. So if you look at, for instance, the uh, ether theories of light in the, the 1900s, it has been argued that uh, the ether was an idle wheel. It wasn't actually involved in the derivation of the prediction. Uh, similarly, um, the specific type of success that realists focus on tends to be risky, novel predictions. So what we want are theories that uh, predict phenomena that are unexpected. Um, there's nothing particularly impressive about constructing a theory that accommodates phenomena that, it already, that, that is already known, um, but if you predict something novel, uh, that's where you need to invoke the truth of the theory to explain its success. Okay, so over time, the success to truth inference has become increasingly complicated. It's, and, and so here's, here's an example. I'm just going to read this whole thing. It's quite a, quite a large quote, but... Uh, <laughs> Uh, so this is from a recent article by Peter Vickers, it's called Towards a Realistic Success to Truth Inference. So this is Peter Vickers' uh, version of the success to truth inference. I'll quote, One should believe the working posits of a theory to be approximately true when one's degree of belief in those working posits becomes very high, and one's degree of belief should be proportioned to the evidence in the following way. Whenever a theory achieves novel predictive success, one's degree of belief should increase with the 
<laughs> with one's degree of belief should increase to the degree that the prediction is risky, uh, bracket, the empirical result predicted has low power probability, close bracket, but at the same time, disconfirmations should decrease one's degree of belief, A, to the extent that the negation of the empirical result in question is expected if the working posits are approximately true, and also B, to the extent that the actual empirical result is expected if the working posits are false. Okay, so, I mean now, okay, right, so looking at that inference, it's not as simple as just saying, all right, well, we believe the truth of our best theories. No, um, what we need to do for, if, if we're going to um, use this inference is we need to distinguish between different kinds of predictions. We need to focus on the novel predictions. We need an assessment of the riskiness of those predictions. We need to distinguish the working posits from the idle wheels. We need to determine the probability of the empirical results if the posits are true and if the posits are false and so on. There's a lot of work to be done. Um, that's the point. So the question is, if, if Vickers is right, how much of science can I reasonably believe? Like, how much can I be a realist about? Now, of course, that's Vickers's version of the success to truth inference. But as I said, I mean, it, this is in general what realists tend to do. Um, so in response to apparent counterexamples to the success to truth inference, you make the inference more complicated. You add qualifications to it so that those counterexamples no longer uh, apply. So it seems that what I need in order to believe that some aspect of a theory is true is fairly extensive knowledge uh, of the theory, of its historical development, of its specific relationship to the evidence. I need to distinguish working posits from idle wheels. I need to know how the theory interacts with auxiliary hypotheses so as to entail with predictions and so on. And so it seems to me that what we end up with here is, okay, let's say that we had a, you know, convincing argument for the kind of success to truth inference given by Vickers. Well, in that case, realism of some sort would be justified, but it would be mostly kind of inert. It wouldn't be something I could use to guide my beliefs because I just don't have the relevant expertise and very few people are going to have the relevant expertise um, to make these assessments. In fact, even, you know, so like at best, you could probably have the relevant expertise, you know, with respect to some specific areas of science. Um, but but that's all right. So the, the problem is this, the the original realist success to truth inference could guide my belief because what the original inference says is, well, science is really successful and you just, and because of that, you're justified in believing that our best theories are approximately true. So how do I use that to guide my belief? Well, I just listen to what scientists say, or I just open a science textbook and read what's written in there. That's it. Okay. And then I, then I can believe it. Uh, if I, right, if it's a theory that is accepted by contemporary science, I can believe it. But this new realist inference requires like much more detailed understanding, uh, a degree of understanding that probably outstrips what most contemporary philosophers and I mean, probably even a lot of scientists actually have. Um, so at best, what I'm left with is a kind of conditional claim um, that if some theory T meets conditions A, B, C, D, then I am justified in believing T. Um, but I'm not really going to be in a position to know in any given case whether a theory actually does meet those conditions. Um, so we seem to end up in a, you know, like on the one hand, we, can, we end up with a kind of case for realism, which is going to land us in skepticism, because the, the idea would be, well, you justify a realist inference. A realist inference is justified for cases where theories meet various conditions. But then we have this skeptical problem because we're not in a position to tell which theories meet those conditions. So, I mean, one, one option here might be you could say, well, you know, couldn't you just sort of trust the experts um, so other people can inform me whether uh, 
theories meet conditions A, B, C, D, etc. Um, now, it's one thing to trust expert consensus with respect to whether or not a theory works in, in general. <laughs> um, but I think in this case, the appeal to expert consensus is going to be quite problematic. Um, so bear in mind that you can't just appeal to the consensus among scientists. Scientists are not drawing these distinctions. Scientists don't really bother with distinctions between, you know, working posits and idle wheels. This is something that philosophers have come up with. Even, you know, novel predictions haven't really played that much of a role, um, or at least arguably haven't played that much of a role in, um, in, in the decision about which scientific theories to accept. Stephen Brush has done some good work on this. I forget the name of the article, but I'll look it up after I've done this video and link it in the description. Um, so, uh, but, but, but anyway, um, the, the point is this, there's, there's not going to be any consensus among philosophers on, you know, what counts as successful reference of theoretical terms or exactly what counts as an idle wheel or exactly how much retention of a theory there is over time and, and these are sort of either philosophical or historical questions um so and there isn't really consensus on them um so uh, yeah it, it doesn't seem like appealing to expert consensus is going to help because there just isn't the relevant kind of expert consensus. Um, I mean, for so I mean, for example, right when it comes to this distinction between working posits and idle wheels, well, what exactly counts as a working posit? And then once we've figured out what exactly counts as a working posit, uh, is you know this part of a theory a, a working posit or not? Um, there's going to be plenty of debate about about that in many cases. Um, and again, that's not something that you can resolve just by asking the scientists, um, because these are often going to appeal to more philosophical or historical considerations. Um, so, yeah, uh, expert consensus probably isn't going to help. I mean, <clears throat> I think, you know, one objection to, to this challenge, I suppose, is just to say that it doesn't really matter. Um, so you might say, look, realism is first and foremost an explanatory hypothesis. Uh, the claim that the realist is making is the best explanation for particular features of science is that certain aspects of those scientific theories are true. And whether or not that can guide your belief is just irrelevant, right? It's, yeah, I mean, I mean, because the what, what we're saying is here, we're putting forward an explanation for certain puzzling features of science, right? We notice that you know, scientific theories exhibit correct novel predictions, and we want to explain that. Um, how do they do this? And then the realist has an explanation. Well, certain features of those theories are true. Um, and so that's just tangential to the question of like, well, you know, what should be the, a sort of, how do I like, just as a sort of individual wanting to know how the world works, how, how do I guide my own belief? Um, I may not be justified in believing that some particular theory is true, but I am justified in believing that, like, maybe some theory is true, or perhaps something like that. Like, I may not be justified in believing that a particular theory is true, but that's just because I'm not going to be justified in believing that it has the relevant features that would be best explained by it being true. But there will likely be other theories that do have those features, even if I don't know which ones they are. Um, like, maybe you could say this. And I think actually this response is perfectly fair, right? Like, if, if there's a realist who is just putting forward, re forward their realism as this kind of explanatory hypothesis, fine. Um, but then this objection is not going to apply to them. But I am doubtful <laughs> whether, um, whether most realists would really whether that's all that they want, right? So yes, they do want to put it forward as an explanatory hypothesis, but I don't think that's all that they want. I think what they want is to be in a position to justifiably believe in a significant portion of contemporary science. Um, but if the challenge I am raising is correct, then it seems like we're not in a position to do that. Um, so like, even if, even if realism is true, like even if 
Peter Vickers has an overwhelming argument for his success to truth inference, it seems like that still wouldn't put us in a position to say, okay, we can justifiably believe a significant portion of contemporary science. Um, and of course, you know, I, I actually with the specific version that Vickers gives, um, it's framed explicitly in terms of degrees of belief rather than, so, you know, that actually does seem to be um, something that's claiming to guide belief. Uh, but yeah, I mean, look, I think many realists, um, you know, they, they, they want to say, okay, we're justified in believing that this particular theory is true. And many philosophical debates um, often depend or at least presuppose uh, a kind of realist interpretation of the theories that they might be appealing to. You know, when you look at philosophers of mind, they will often appeal to results in psychology or neuroscience or whatever. They seem to be presupposing a kind of realist interpretation there. Um, again, you know, it's not obvious that it's going to be so easy to defend that if you were to use something like the um, success to truth inference that Vickers offers. Okay, so there you go. That's, um, that's a new challenge to realism. Um, and that's all for now. Bye, everybody. <laughs>